Hi everyone and welcome to another White Hat Media webinar. Uh, today we'll be talking to you about how you can create a seasonal marketing campaign that stands head and shoulders above the competition and bring in extra clients and customers during a traditionally slow season for non-retail businesses. Uh, firstly, we want to cover precisely why seasonal marketing campaigns, Christmas in particular, can work for both B2B and B2C businesses. Sure, those in the B2C sector might have to think a little bit more creatively about how to tie the season into what they do, but the opportunity is definitely there for considerable growth at Christmas, regardless of your industry. Uh, you just have to look at figures from last year in a poll run by ING, which asked when business owners and consumers spend more money. You might be surprised to see that winter isn't far behind summer in terms of most money spent. Also, consider the amount of time spent online in winter, especially in the West, where short days, cold temperatures and early nightfall all conspire to ensure that more people are browsing the web and their social media networks than at any other time of the year. Um, it's easy to see that uh, running a seasonal campaign is a wise move whether you're in B2C or B2B. Now, you don't have to be John Lewis to fire out an engaging, compelling and talked about seasonal campaign. Uh, so we've, we've selected a couple of great examples from B2C and B2C businesses to show you how it can work. WestJet Airlines delivered a Christmas miracle to 250 unsuspecting customers in early December. Uh, when, pe when passengers checked in, they encountered a digital kiosk live streaming Santa Claus. Um, decked in WestJet Blue, uh, Santa asked travellers what they wanted for Christmas. Now, it could have ended there, but instead WestJet employees rushed to purchase each item on Santa's list. Uh, when they landed, the passengers were shocked to find wrapped and personalised gifts at baggage, baggage claim. Um, WestJet captured the stunt from start to finish and made a five minute video for its popular YouTube channel. It went viral, amassing 31.9 million views in a week. Uh, people all over the world watched a young woman cheer for her free flight home for the holidays and another cry as she unwrapped her digital camera. Um, the company also wove a Twitter contest into the campaign. If you tweeted the video, you were entered for a chance to win a free airfare for two. And if the chance to win flights isn't enough for motivation, they wrote, uh, we're also going to give Christmas flights to a family in need if our video hits 200,000 views. Um, now, what we're looking at here is uh, London-based agency Weapon 7's Snow, uh, Snow Machine uh, content marketing campaign. Uh, they came up with a creative way to spark engagement last winter, setting up a snow machine activated by tweets. Uh, when Twitter users tweeted the hashtag, hashtag snow to the handle at the snow machine, the snow machine set up on the street would produce snow and uh, pedestrians loved it. Now this stunt works to both spark engagement face to face and on social media, whilst also providing quality content in the resulting video. And um, by the way, the, res the website featured on this screenshot is Think with, Do uh, with Google, Think with Google, Think with Google.com, a fantastic resource for really inspiring content and seasonal marketing campaigns. Now, as with any marketing campaign, seasonal or holiday campaigns will need a significant amount of proper planning and measurement to work successfully. Uh, simply putting out a promoted Facebook post on its lonesome and hoping for the best just isn't going to cut it. So you're going to need to specify measurable objectives for the campaign, a workable budget, be realistic about timelines and know who your audience is, which I'll be covering shortly. Uh, the metrics you'll need to consider will depend on the type of campaign you're running and what your goals are. So, for example, if your campaign is solely social media based, you might look at likes, shares and comments. Now, you might think that Facebook likes or retweets count as engagement, but they don't. Uh, we could, for example, like 50 Facebook posts or retweet 50 tweets in a minute, but does that really mean we're engaged? Um, sticking to metrics like comments and clicks will allow you to truly understand the worth of your social media campaign. Of course, it all comes down to ROI, which is why it's important to set your budget after a good deal of research, as you don't want to be paying more while the campaign's running, unless it's uh, particularly successful and you know it's worth it, obviously. During your campaign, uh, be sure to monitor engagement metrics and conversions and make yours a malleable, agile process whereby you can modify the campaign if you see certain elements not working as well as others. Um, bear in mind also that not only are your audience likely to be switched off during the actual holiday period, but so will your staff. So you won't have anyone around to monitor the campaign and respond to interest online. With this in mind, be realistic about your timeline and aim to have your campaign closed and ready to port on before everyone goes home for Christmas. Um, if possible, report on the campaign's successes and failings before you head off your holidays. Uh, that way you're looking at it while it's still fresh in the memory. However, if that's not possible, when you and your staff return in the new year, really don't delay in picking apart the campaign immediately because uh, the learnings that you take from that campaign may well inform the very next thing you do. 
Now, before you start planning your seasonal marketing campaign, um, it's really important to get a handle on not only your usual audience, but any audience you might pick up during the campaign. The reason I'm saying this is primarily due to the fact that people of different backgrounds, cultures and religions have different beliefs about the uh, winter holiday period. For example, if you know that a large part of your target audience don't celebrate Christmas, you should ensure that your campaign sticks only to you know, the immutable facets of Christmas, such as snow and robins and snowmen and the like. However, if you're running an international business, you might have to think hard about how you want to present your campaign, as obviously it doesn't get cold in December in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, However, thorough audience research will allow you to understand the best way to present your campaign in order to appeal to the widest part of your demographic possible. And that's without offending or ignoring anyone. It's tricky, but it can be done. Um, now, just before I hand you over to Stephen, I'm just going to take a look at some of the holiday campaign types you might want to use. Um, a promo offer can work really well on the run-up to Christmas for both B2C and B2C but it can be a big mistake to discount your products or services too much just to get people in the door. If it's a crazy deal, you're going to attract discount shoppers, and unless you can afford to keep that huge discount going, you're just giving stuff away. Instead, pair sale prices and coupons with a strategy that ensures customers leave their content inform uh, contact information rather as part of the process. Now, this lets you target them for future campaigns and turn them into repeat customers, which is what we all want. Now, when it comes to giveaways, make sure you reward people with goodies that are related to your product or brand. Don't just give away an iPad because you think it will ensure people will enter your competition. If you're a restaurant, you give away a dinner for two. So consider what would not only attract people to, brand, but to your brand, but also uh, keep them thinking of you after they've entered. As you can see from this example, Max's Restaurant, um, an American chain with a decidedly chicken-focused brief, has for some reason given away Christmas gift packs that have absolutely nothing to do with their brand or product. Uh, they might have fared better if the giveaway was for a special Christmas meal at the restaurant. At Christmas, it can be very a very hard time to get noticed, uh, but one thing you have in your side is that a huge proportion of your audience are likely to be thinking about the same thing at the same time. So create something funny or useful, but ultimately shareable about the winter holiday that shows your brand at its best and gives people an insight into your world. Uh, the most successful content marketing campaigns at Christmas tend to be ones that allow users on social media to personalize a Christmas video or message and share it almost automatically with their friends, or in the case of this example, allow them to be immersed in the campaign, wondering aloud and online what the fairies meant. It turned out to be a really subtle campaign by m and uh, which decided to drop the celebrity, the celebrity endorsements and instead focus on the spirit of Christmas. Um, now, I hope I've given you some good insight into the kinds of campaigns you can be inspired by and the types of seasonal campaigns there are out there. Uh, I'll now hand over to Stephen, who's going to help you be original in a saturated season and cover some important aspects such as online platforms and branding. Hello. Okay, so I'm going to talk about, uh, first off, talk about how to be original in a saturated season. So we all know it's blooming tough to be original and inventive around Christmas because additions to your marketing assets, Santa hats, three kings, Christmas stockings, Virgin Mary, all of that is already in play. They're well-worn icons of the season, and this is of course the same for many other seasons, and are impossible to avoid. So what you can do to ensure that your assets are not formulaic um, but are creative and different is the following. Use your own voice. Ultimately, the one thing that makes your company original is its own voice. Your unique voice will enable you to show your difference to your competitors. So what is your unique voice? If you don't already know, if you haven't already laid it out in carefully crafted and consultative tone of voice and brand and style guidelines, then perhaps that's where you need to start. But presuming you've already done this, then this will be your starting point for an original seasonal campaign. When using your own voice, don't just think about it as a style, Think about it as a way to tell your own story. Use it to tell people what you're passionate about, what makes your imagination go wild, and what influences you. These things are your starting point, your basis for your campaign. Open your mind box and release the invention. You want to be inventive. Imagination, creativity, ingenuity. How do you use these for effective marketing campaigns? It's about tying cleverness and creativity to your understanding of your own audience and your own distinct voice. It's not about being wacky, but it's about authenticity. 
some of the most memorable stories managed to create affinity between all these things. For instance, uh, BMW Snowchat, uh, they created a Snapchat type tool that allows you to write a message on a frosted car windscreen and share it to your friends. The message would then delete itself after five seconds. This is from Christmas, last Christmas. Um, the target audience was young consumers, a much sought after target market who would be familiar with Snapchat and was the perfect tool for attracting that type of audience. As with all campaigns, understanding your audience or your intended target audience as much as it's possible is the best way to go about things. Um, learn the ways they communicate, become one with the platforms they use, and position your messaging towards them. Naturally, you'll already be doing this, but there might be other ways in which your audience communicate that you're missing out on, such as on Snapchat or Instagram or through forums, which are not so obvious as Twitter and Facebook. So it might be worth investing in social listening tools or doing some heavy manual research to find these audiences. Um, finally, this all, all ties into being authentic. If you abide by the above, if you stick to your own voice, if you be imaginative in your marketing and deliver it to a responsive community, you will gain authenticity as a byproduct. Authenticity in marketing is about aligning these aspects and will help you to deliver a more natural experience for your customers. And the byproduct of this is that you'll achieve more sales. People like authenticity, but when customers buy into it, you're helping to build a tribe build a community, and these like-minded people would then help to promote your products beyond the paid reach of your campaigns. Moving on then, we're going to look at which platforms you should use. So you want to um, plan your strategy across platforms. When creating your strategy, you need to make sure that whatever you do, you put your customer smack bang in the center of it. What does that mean? Well, let me break it down for you. Choosing the right platform for your strategy is vitally important because now audiences are multi-device, platforms are silos in their own right, audiences want relative, relevant native experiences, so what works on Twitter doesn't work on Facebook or on Tumblr, whatever platform you want to put it out on. So considering how your campaign is displayed to your audience will help you to guide your platform choice. Um, you also need to align somewhat with audience expectations. So if you're a serious B2B tool, then perhaps investing in advertisements on Tumblr is not the way to go, but choosing PPC and LinkedIn might well be. You then want to integrate your plan. You need to integrate your plan with the platforms you use. To do this, you should start by understanding how your audiences find you and connect with your brand online. So what you need to do is map your audiences across the digital universe. This means identifying audience segments on platforms, using conversion goal data and website traffic, use existing PPC and other advertising data such as display, social media, affiliate marketing, real-time, biddable, etc., for enhanced audience data. Um, and some advertising managers also provide data such as job position, um, region or the education level of your audience. Um, you want to use social data to deepen your understanding of your audience. You can find data on gender splits, regional splits, the content people engage with the most, what times of day they engage with your posts, etc. And you also, if you have the budget, want to use any sort of um, social listening tools to bridge the gap between quantitative and qualitative data. With this data, you should have a pretty comprehensive view of where your audience is, where they hang out, what type of content they consume, what channels they're most likely to find you on, and how responsive they are to certain content types. Um, okay, so finally then, which platform should you choose? Once you've identified your opportunity, you can then start to plan the platforms you need. Just to give you a brief overview of the platforms then that you might want to consider. Um, Pinterest is a brilliant visual platform and performs perfectly dis for displaying and selling B2C products. Um, Twitter obviously is where the conversations start and it's a vital place to achieve virality and is where you want to get traction. Uh, everyone and their dad is on Facebook regardless of age. Everyone has it and so should you. So you want to start the buzz by feeding your campaign to your community. Uh, Instagram has incredible reach and is primarily about photos and short videos. However, brands and influencers have been able to get traction by utilizing the large community and hashtagging en masse. LinkedIn is a great tool for B2B and also has a vibrant community. It's not for direct selling, 
usually, although there are some good examples of this, but it's brilliant for starting B2B campaigns on. Um, Tumblr is a pretty crazy creative platform for daring B2C brands with a young and fairly off the wall audience. If you've got a pretty weird idea for a campaign, then perhaps you should start here. Snapchat offers awesome reach and is content heavy. It's about storytelling and it might just be right for an inventive B2C campaign that seeks to attract a young demographic. And then finally, PPC is of course a necessity for the support of many campaigns. And though, although we're not going to talk about it here, it's worth noting that it can be used to support branded and non-branded campaigns, although obviously the price does get higher the more competitive the market, i.e. during Christmas. Uh, but just be aware that before you pick one, you want to know will there be any seasonal change in the use of usage of those platforms and from what dates roughly. The thought that strikes me is that usage of LinkedIn probably takes a dip towards late December, so reaching the audience will become increasingly harder. This won't be the same on other platforms, however. It's also worth getting an understanding of how much extra campaigns will cost at that, at that time as more um, competitors use the platform for advertising. Now we're going to look at branding and design. Okay, so making it extra special this Christmas. Seasonal marketing, marketing campaigns allow you to explore a great variety of design options across all your channels. This will help you to mark yourself out at a time when consumers are under a deluge of adverts and promotions designed to make them spend their money elsewhere. Your new graphics can focus more on, on more than just selling. For instance, use them to remind customers that deals are ending or are just starting or that they need to sign up to get that all-important discount. Remember, it's not just about direct sales. Offering something extra at this time can help to increase your customer base as well as your advertising reach and your campaign reach, even. Um, consistency in branding. You want to ensure consistency across all your branding. This is one of the key things that is often forgotten at a time like this. Just because it's seasonal doesn't mean you can start messing with the logo or redesigning your font choices. Establishing consistency across your channels means consistency in message for the customer. It means you are, that you align with what your customer stands for, uh, sorry, your company stands for, and it engenders, it engenders trust and authenticity at a time when potential customers are attacked on all sides by brands looking for their buck. Ensuring consistency means that you're cementing brand recognition and shining a torchlight through the cloud of marketing messages customers receive at this time of year. This is vitally important now more than ever as customers go through any number of touch points across any number of media before finally deciding upon a product. Keeping that consistency then, while being flexible for devices and platforms, ensures recognizability. Here are some things you can, should consider for consistency across, uh, across digital. So if you're running a multi-channel campaign, Here's a non-exhaustive list of the things you should think about changing to align with your seasonal campaign. So on your website, think about banners, logos, marketing collateral, as in the ebooks, infographics, um, product images, for instance, um, blog images and article images, um, buttons and other icons. For social media, you've got cover photos, profile photos, post images, backgrounds, bespoke advertising images. Um, as well as additional banners or images for items such as Facebook tab pages, etc. And then for video and YouTube, um, you want to consider the the logo and the background on the video, the icons and the effects you use, as well as um, channel logos and additional branding. Then we're going to move now to social media advertising. Um, so. Supporting your campaign with social media advertising. On many platforms these days, organic reach isn't up to much, and in this saturated season, it's likely that your well thought out campaign will not get around to addressing your entire audience unless you start paying money. Promotion these days is vital to success. Supporting your campaigns with advertising on social media improves the reach of your campaign, allowing you to get right into your audience's online environment. Because it's native to their environment, it doesn't feel forced or unnatural as if someone's forced you to watch an advert right in your newsfeed. So the best examples are much more nuanced and playful. What's more, this can be used as a type of demand generation that allows you to focus on people who are most likely to actually want to use your product, sign up to your database, or whatever your long-term objective is, by creating that demand early on. Um, 
alignment with campaign objectives is primary primary here for your social media advertising. Um, this type of advertising is no longer just about brand awareness or driving impressions, although it can be if that's what you want. Um, with a plethora of advert types, you can now focus on generating leads within Facebook or Twitter. You can use tracking pictures to capture conversion data. You can get people to download your new seasonal app or focus simply on spreading your story. Each platform, whether LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or Tumblr, has their own unique advert types that have been created to fit with the audience demographic, the, the advert display, and the functionality of that platform. So you want to choose your advert. OK, so you understand how additional reach through promoted posts and align with your own objectives works. So now you must choose your advert. Uh, Facebook has a great many objectives, including um, boosting posts, uh, website, uh, getting website traffic, raising event attendance, which is useful for increasing offline participation, um, increasing video views, um, getting website conversions and more. Twitter too has some superb ad types to choose from, um, including engagement with, with your tweets, uh, website clicks and conversions, app installations, lead collection on the platform, follower increases and video views. For business to business, LinkedIn uses text ads, sponsored updates, and direct sponsored content. The latter two perform much the same as other sponsored content types and appear, and appear as posts in the newsfeed. Text ads appear on the side panels. Um, for Instagram, Tumblr, and Snapchat, these are all now available for businesses to advertise on. They feature similar ad types as Facebook and Twitter, centered on sponsored posts. Uh, Snapchat features two different story types, um, sort of very content heavy, those ones. Um, uh, and, and they run as bespoke campaigns only at this point. Um, my final word on this is great content will get you far, but it won't get you anywhere near where you think it might unless you uh, want to spend money promoting it. Larry Kim, the influential digital marketer, sums it up perfectly, saying that great content plus great promotion equals incredible results. OK, so we're going to start looking at measuring success and key learnings. How much did the results of your campaign align with your objectives? If you are after 100 sales, did you hit that magic number, or did you fall short? This is the first step in measuring success, as every result will lead to further questions. So did you manage to succeed? Why did that happen? Was it a perfect alignment of advert and landing page? Was it that your price point was well adjusted for your competitors in the global market? Or was it just that your goals were achievable ones and that you didn't overstretch? And if you failed, why did you fail? Sure, it's a disappointment, but it's also a time to learn. Was your data capture or sales process just too complex for the average customer? Were you targeting expensive keywords and thus causing your CPC to be too high? Perhaps your goals are way out of alignment with what's feasible. So how can we learn to improve? Um, this absolutely depends on the types of campaigns you're aiming for, what mediums you chose to deliver it through, and what your objectives were. But I'll take a look at the following. Uh, sales customer journey. The sales or customer journey is a key process that leads the customer from your initial outreach or advertising all the way through to the final sale of your product. Take the journey yourself, or better yet, get people who haven't worked on the process to do it, and see how what points of friction there might there are that might cause your audience to drop out of the sale or sign up. Secondly, does your outbound marketing collateral align with the branding on your website? If not, it could fail to meet your customers' expectations, which might make them lose trust in the your product you're selling, what you're giving away. This is especially true at Christmas time or seasonal times when it's easy for designers and creatives to get carried away. Thirdly, set realistic goals. If you don't set realistic goals at the start of your campaign, then you won't be able to achieve them. But worse, the same harms your overall budget and the budget you'd use for promotion of your campaign. Furthermore, setting unrealistic objectives can lead to failure as resources become overstretched or timelines become difficult to maintain. And setting up for next year. What's the best thing about running these campaigns? You get to build all this experience and all this collateral for next year. It's a win-win, regardless if you feel like you've just lost. 
The sort of knowledge you've just gained is one of the most valuable things for making your next seasonal campaign a real success. And then finally, we're going to look at key takeaways. The key takeaways then, audience. Delve deep into your audience data from your market research, your marketing strategy documents, your Google Analytics, Facebook, Twitter, and other audience and follower data, including, of course, all that data you've gathered from paid advertising across all channels. Once you've really got to grips with all that data, then it's time for you to make sure you really know your audience. Different verticals have different ways of communicating, have different emotional and psychological tri triggers, are unaffected by different psychological cultural touch points, and this is where you either become authentic or fall down. Understanding all of these things will ensure that you have the authenticity to speak directly to them in their own language. If you block this down, your campaign is one step closer to success. Consistency. Consistency with your branding at a time when there's so many other marketing messages out there from myriad companies. It's so utterly vital to ensuring the success of your campaign. Of course, you want to make allowances for the, for the seasonal message, but these should only be things like putting a Santa hat on your logo or having your mascot dressed up like an elf. But whatever you do, don't adapt your branding. In an earlier slide, we saw how Coca-Cola shooshed up their seasonal marketing with extra sparkles, snowflakes, and snowfall. In fact, we instantly recognized that example. But what they don't do, what they don't ever do, is change their branding. It remains the same. It remains consistent. It just happens to work wonderfully for Christmas, too. Aligning with your objectives. More important than all else, in my opinion, is to set realistic, achievable objectives. These objectives will then form the greater part of what you do in this campaign. Want to reach a, m a million people? Create something that's going to get word of mouth, something that's shareable. Want to get sign-ups on your website? There's no need to reach a million people. Instead, you want to work on something that's going to entice people to enter their details. For that, you'll need to work on the customer journey and help people off-ramp from social and convert on site. Alignment with objectives also encompasses your budget, your allocation of resources, and the amount of time you invest in something. These things are, of course, vital and necessary for the successful imp implementation of your marketing campaign. Okay, so that's the end of our uh, webinar. And we'll see if we have any questions to answer. Hold on. No questions as of yet. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm going to move on to this next slide. So now. Thank you for listening. Um, I've been Stephen Smith, Content Social Media Executive, and before me was Jamie Pittman, Content and Social Media Manager. You can find us and add us, uh, connect with us on LinkedIn at the following um, addresses. Um, we also wrote this uh, lovely free ebook, How to Measure Social Media Effectively, and you can download that now at whyhatmedia.com or actually at that bit.ly link that's on this slide. Um, we'll be sharing the slide on uh, Whitehead Media LinkedIn um, and on our own profiles. Um, so you'll be able to find it there. Thank you very much and see you all soon.